see the first Terra data dashboards now. Flipside Crypto. Hello guys, welcome to Lunar Crypto. Today we'll be talking about that article published on June 29th, 2021 by Brendan Murray of CoinMarketCap.com. Terra data has arrived. Now, it's time to take a deeper dive into the ecosystem and the Flipside ecosystem with our Terra data dashboards. And we're getting some help from Joanne Calogari and our official Terra ambassador, Mike Plattis. Terra's suite of stablecoins. For those that are not familiar, Terra consists of a group of stablecoins that mirror the value of real-world fiat currencies. Many different use cases are in the works for these currencies. In fact, as Joanne points out, Terra is designed to allow you to earn interest on stablecoins, spend crypto easily with merchants, and replace most of your banking needs with one seamless DeFi protocol. Activity picks up for new Terra wallets. We'll start our analysis by taking a look at the daily transaction numbers for different wallet types on Terra. As we can see in the graph below, larger wallets defined as those holding more than $100,000 in value and smaller wallets alike seem to be pulling their weight equally. According to Joanne, this could indicate that Terra usage is diversified by both whales and smaller players. When we compare new and old wallets, meanwhile, older accounts have mostly dominated usage. When we look at the last few days, however, we can see an increase in usage from newer accounts, which could signal that new users are becoming more active. Staking spikes during bull run. Next up is a look at the viability of validators during the recent Luna price drop. As Mike Plattis reminds us, Luna holders do not stake their tokens directly. Instead, they delegate their Luna to a validator, giving a wider range of Luna holders access to rewards. When we examine staking activities, as can be seen below, there's a surprise. The raw volume of staking spiked during the peak of the bull run in mid-March, rather than during the recent price drop. According to Mike Plattis, the three highest volume days of total delegations were followed by the three worst drops percentage-wise in Luna's price. He added, quote, It seemed as if delegators anticipated the correction over their overextended asset. Also, interestingly, staking supply has continually grown in recent months, regardless of the price of Luna itself. Even immediately after the drop in price, Mike Plattis points activity continued to increase, showing users' confidence in the overall ecosystem. Terra passed the stress test relatively well. Mike Plattis noted, Convicted holders became buyers and immediately put their Luna to work by staking it. This shows a real demand for Luna as collateral and as a productive asset. Luna is positioned as a value capture for all activity within the ecosystem. Those who did remain in the network saw a decreasing tax rate. That can be expected to continue, Mike Platt has said, as staking activity and transactions each continue to increase over time. And if you like our video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.